Hey, welcome. And now we can add validation check to our test form fields. Okay. To do this, first of all, we have to go to the upload tab screen. Then we have to go to the first tab we have over here, and that is going to be the general tab screen. So general screen, and uh, now we can use control and B to make this wide. Now, as you know, within the test form field, it has a property known as validator. And within the parentheses of the validator, it's going to take in the value, which is referring to the actual input of the user. And now we can have a check. We can then say if the value, the value dot is empty, Novaya, we need this over here. If it is empty, then we want to return a test which is going to say this we can just copy copy this and paste this over here and not a comma but a semicolon else if it is filled in else then we want to sorry we want to return no that is allow the user to go or do nothing and I think you've seen this before, so we can just easily copy this and uh, do it for the rest of the test form field. And this is going to be enter product size and uh, semicolon. Okay. Copy this again. And. Uh, we have another test form field over here. Sorry, I think I copied. Okay. Uh, paste this. I think I copied one extra. I'm just gonna get rid of this, get rid of that, and recopy. Okay, great. Copy this, and this is gonna be for the quantity. And is uh, it over here? And copy again. Okay, we have this test form field again for the description. And this is going to be enter product description. Okay. And I think this is all the test form field we have within the general screen. Now we have to go to uh, the shipping tab screen. Ctrl and B to make this smaller. Then uh, shipping tab screen. And uh, we have the test field over here. So we can paste this. So I'm just going to do this again. Validator actual input of the user if value dot is empty then on a test we should say enter sorry enter shipping charge else return null and this is it okay use control and s to save again and uh, let's see where else we have the test form field okay we have that within the brown and size so we have to go to the attributes and the uh, over here, we can then say uh, validator value if what we can also do is we can make the test form field reusable so we don't have to do it in every screen. But uh, sometimes trying to make codes reusable can even make it more 
difficult to understand so most of the time you want to uh, do it straight this way because trying to make code reusable can even make it get more uh, confusing a uh, return enter size else return no okay and now i'm gonna copy this and i think we have okay this is what the brown i didn't see this at first the brand name and this is it now we need to create the form key and we're going to be creating this form key within the upload tab screen upload where's that upload screen sorry not upload tab screen so this is the upload screen where we basically created each tab we have that is this tab the tab we ha we we are well the tab we have over here so this is where we this is the screen we created all this tab and also we created the tab view that is uh, the main body and this is what you've seen over here and we said the tab bar view is going to be the general screen the shipping screen the attribute screen and the image tab screen you can as well call it general tab screen and shipping tab screen in order to make it uh, much more understandable because probably in the future you might have a screen called general screen and you may not be easily been able to differentiate between the general screen and the general tab screen so most of the time it is recommended you just go ahead and name things as they are so you can just go ahead and rename yours but i'm not going to be doing mine i'm just going to go with this okay so over here we have the all the screens we've seen over here so what we want to do is before we we print all this out we want to be able to check to make sure the form was uh, filled in so over here first of all we have to get rid of this remember the need for this constructor is to pass in data from one screen to another and since we're currently not passing any screen from one screen to another we can just go ahead and get rid of that and then we can say final and you've seen this before global e and we have to know the current situation of the form so we have to say it is also a type of form state and then we can say underscore form Key. form key is going to be equal to the global global what <laughs> global key yeah and then a form state correct and now we have to wrap our parent widget with i think you've seen something similar to this before but currently we are using provider and uh, we are not on the same we are not clicking on the button on the same screen so that's why we are calling we are doing uh this a bit uh different and hopefully you understand this but if you don't please do what to let me know and i'm fully available to uh answer okay so we have to wrap our parent widget so via we have the default controller remember without the default controller this tab bar is not going to work so we have to wrap it with a default uh, tab bar controller and also we have to specify the length that is how many tab bar we need and we said we want four tab bar and you can just go ahead and make yours five and have probably an additional tab bar you want and what we can do now is we can wrap our scaffold with the form in order to have access to the key so we can bind this underscore form key to that form so wrap with widget and form and within the form widget we have this property known as key and then we can see underscore form key okay this is it and before we call this over here before we print all this out we can get rid of this and we can then say if underscore form key dot current state to get the situation of the form dot 
validate then we want to do this okay great and this is basically it and hopefully you understand but if you don't please do well to let me know and let's try this out to see if it's gonna work as we expect but definitely now this form or this fields are currently not valid so let's click on save okay we have all these errors over there. and okay and also we should have it same over here okay i'm just gonna click on this okay we have it over here and uh click on this we have it over here as well some skill some skill and what we can also do let's see if we can hide this upload until an image has been selected let's see if we can do this we will always try to create logics okay underscore image so this over here we store the picked images and this over here we store the download url that is in the process of uploading to the firebase storage right so this is what we need after the image has been displayed so over here we can also say underscore image is not dot is not empty if it is not empty then we want to show this else we just want to show a test that does not an empty test okay let's uh, use control and s to save and we shouldn't we should not see this upload anymore because it is currently empty if it is not empty sorry it is not empty right what am i saying wait for this okay if it is not empty then only we want to show this and i'm going to try to pick an image to make sure everything is working as we expect then in the next lecture we can uh, start uploading the product to our firebase uh, storage you're gonna love this wait for this if it is not empty then we want to show this else if it is empty we want to display this so it's gonna be working as we okay i'm just gonna pick this okay and now we got that over there so everything is working dynamically and hopefully you love this okay in the next lecture we should be able to upload all this item remember we already store everything in our provider so all we just have to do is to click on the button that is the save over there to send all the data to our cloud fire store okay see you next